Um, okay, well hi, thanks so much for everyone sending in their videos, because like, I genuinely couldn't have done the film without them, and it will make more sense once you've seen the film. Um, Titch is hoping to come, um, but his, he's currently, there's a bit of a storm at the moment, so their Wi-Fi is a bit dodgy, um, so he might come a bit later, um, if not, he knows he wants to be here, so <laughs> um, he definitely, yeah, wishes he was here. Um, the film was produced as part of my masters, it's a 14 minute film, it's partially animated, it's also fully filmed, um, it was filmed over six days in Zimbabwe and then edited over a couple of months, <laughs> edited and animated over a couple of months, and um, yeah, it's not being released publicly until next year, so this is kind of the second time it's been viewed by a group of people, um, the first time being with the rest of the films from my cohort. Um, a few weeks ago, and yeah, I, I'm i really happy with how it's turned out. It was a lot of fun to produce a lot of, uh, a bit of a challenge as well, <laughs> but um, yeah, I I really hope that you enjoy it, and I hope that, yeah, I, I hope you like it. <laughs> um, I guess I'm gonna just stream it now, and I guess if everyone probably mutes themselves while it's going, but if anyone can't hear just immediately like shout and um <laughs> i did do a little test before so it should be fine um but yeah when an artist communicates science through artistic means this is artivism the aim of artivism is to incite change in thought or behavior it is an effective passive conservation tool and something i feel passionately about My name is Alicia Hayden. I am a wildlife artist from the UK. Tichwana Ngube is also a wildlife artist. He is known as the Watchman in Zimbabwe, where he paints elephants and big cats from life, showcasing their beauty through his art. I wanted to uncover his story and see how Tich the Watchman uses his art to make a difference to wildlife conservation. When I first met Titch as part of an artist panel, I was blown away by his enthusiasm for Zimbabwean wildlife. I'd never been to Africa before, so travelling there to meet Titch and see his artivism in person was a little intimidating. Titch calls himself the Watchman after the biblical story in which the Watchman warns cities of danger. We really have to take care of our environment. So maybe there is a need for a watchman to blow the trumpet and tell people about what's coming. Titch spends lots of his time at the local elephant sanctuary. He told me how he had the privilege of sketching a cheetah called Sylvester. Sylvester was a male cheetah kept at the Wild Horizons Elephant Sanctuary. The first time when I met him, I squatted down in front of him. I'd never seen a cheetah before, so I remember touching him for the first time as he was sitting down with his two feet up. I rolled my hand on his shoulders, touched his hair and his tail as well. So I sat down, did a bit of some sketch, uh, just a few lines, hoping that the next time I come, maybe I'll, I'm going to give myself some time to sit down and sketch him better. One of my favourite paintings is an artivism of Sylvester, painted in Titch's signature style, Splash. I was excited to try my own hand at creating a splash piece with Titch. I always um, had this thing when water spills on the table, especially on the ground. Just mix it with paint, splash it there, and when it dries up, um, just think of something that must happen. That is how the splash thing came. I felt so good about producing that. I had never considered that Titch might use such an unpredictable technique to create such detailed artworks. I'm just trying to send a message to you guys, like, you know what, I'm a wildlife person. I love wildlife, and I draw wildlife, and it's part of my livelihood as well. 
How about if we can just, let's preserve what we have. Titch's interactions with Sylvester inspired him to foster personal relationships with many of the individuals he sees around Victoria Falls. I love big game. Elephants are huge. I just love, they are majestic. You know, when you look at them, when they are walking, or even when they are charging, you know, I, it's just so amazing. At the sanctuary, Titch teaches others how to paint elephants from life, engaging them with conservation through art. However, this session was a little different, as Titch started work on a new piece featuring a herd of elephants, led by his favourite, Coco. At the Elephant Sanctuary, the Wild Horizon Elephant Sanctuary, that was the first time when I had a close encounter. And guess what? I was scared to touch it at the first time. <laughs> I was so nervous. But there was this thing in me like, come on, touch it. Like, okay, okay. I touch it. Ah, that was, that felt so awesome. And from there, I thought elephants were my friends. Despite being such an accomplished wildlife artist, creating bold and confident artivism pieces, I was surprised to discover that Titch had never had a solo exhibition before. Just one of my um, long-awaited days to have uh, my solo exhibition. I'm sure you, you, you realise this will be uh, the first of its own kind, my solo exhibition. So, I set about making his first exhibition happen, while the watchman carried on painting. You, obviously you've created this really beautiful piece, um, yes, yes. and that was what you created yesterday. So I did the whole sketch in acrylic, in a sort of a watercolour style of, a, of approach, just to capture the colours. So that will actually attract me to the painting, and probably get a grip of um, establishing my colours now with oils. So you see with oils is a different medium at all. Some artists do not find oil, oil painting user friendly. So with uh, slow drying mediums, you really need to be patient and um, start your colours very well. It gives you that time to start your colours very well. Titch was brought up by his uncle, Stephen, who worked as a craftsman and then as an elephant ranger in Hawangi National Park. Titch looked up to his uncle's craftsman abilities and fostered aspirations to become an artist from an early age. Uncle Stephen told me how he wasn't always supportive of Titch's art. <laughs> My first wild animal commission, like maybe one of the big fives, it was the elephant, straight from school. I was, I was nervous, but I was very happy to find out the client loved it. And then from there I said, you know what, technically, if I got the, the spark in my hands, I can draw anything. Now, artivism is a family affair. I was surprised to discover that Titch had his small studio with his wife, Sakela. Despite working at the same time, they get on well, apart from when they both battle to play different music over the speaker system, with Sakela favouring gospel and Titch preferring classical. I go music, I mean, I see music. Yeah, now we as child in music. Yeah. Sometimes in music, yeah, we see, yeah, we sing and sing irritated. Like, we go so, and as a woman, yeah, she's a volume. <laughs> Titch feels strongly about the importance of sharing his passion for conservation with others, 
especially his children, Caesar and Siobhania. So the art that I do, they begin to see it from their early years. So since they are images, and they now know the animals. Oh, so today you are painting a leopard. Oh, yes, yes. How did you know about that? I know it's a leopard, you told me so. Now I know that is a leopard, that's a cheetah. Okay, so you're learning. So kids learn much better using images. They're like my huge fans, huge fans of my work. Each time when I finish a work of art, they will say, wow, Daddy, that's, that's nice. Cool, shaka, cool, look, Daddy. I was inspired to see how Titch used his artwork to educate his children. And I hoped his exhibition would help him reach an even larger audience. My time with Titch has flown by, with only one day left before his first solo exhibition. I'm amazed by how much his latest piece has come on since I saw the first sketches three days ago. But Titch still isn't happy with it. The layers are not yet dry, complete, so I'm just doing it carefully so that I will not exhaust my energy for Mahala, you know. You know what Mahala means? For free. Spending your energy for free. Yeah. No returns, you know. So I'll rather just have to wait for it to dry. I persuaded a local restaurant to show the Watchman's first exhibition in the heart of Victoria Falls. This is artivism at work. Uh, I'm so very much impressed by, by what I'm seeing here. This art is just impressive. Teach does all this by himself. He's talented. So Temailoke Atad teaching Kangri He just seems to have an innate ability to protect and conserve wildlife through his paintings. It was wonderful to see how much people adored Titch and his impact on the community. Titch is, you know, he's got it within himself. You know, this is quite a different, you know, piece of work so far. And I'm so, I'm so surprised. For me, this one is more alive. Oh, to yeah. me, it looks like he was here looking at that and just bring it to life. How were you feeling about the exhibition before, you know, before it happened? Like, I know mean, you're quite late. I, know. I was nervous, you know, I was nervous. I was always biting my, my lower lip, like, what's going to happen there? Like, ah. But well, when this morning came, my whole crew came, my entire crew came in and say, Teach, it's time to go. I said, oh, OK. Let's take everything, guys, and go. So, yeah, that was there. <laughs> Several other restaurants and venues have approached Titch to ask him to display his artwork with them, and he now has an additional six exhibitions planned for the coming months. For Titch, art is his life, and this will never change. I have often held myself back when I paint. But seeing the way Titch experiments with techniques has pushed me to do the same. Artivism is about breaking boundaries and changing people's perceptions of the wildlife which surrounds us. Being an artivist can be lonely. It can feel like you're the only person trying to make a difference. But meeting Titch has shown me that there is hope. Artists everywhere are making works which highlight the impact we are having on our planet. And 
And with that, I think we can make a difference. Is now with us as well. He, he joined during the film, so <laughs> yay! <laughs> awesome, good, <laughs> magnificent, Alicia. Super nice to see it. Thank you. <laughs> that was um, amazing. Congrats, both both of you guys. Thank you. And for, I know some people like joined like partners. Thank you very much, my friend. <laughs> um, Hi guys. <laughs> hey Tish. Can you hear me? Yeah, your met network's holding up at the moment. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> uh, fantastic. Um, I knew that some people joined like part of the way through, so I'll send the uh, link out afterwards as well. Uh, so so happy. Me too. I, my um, connection was a bit unstable, that's why I had to move. So uh, um, I missed him a bit. But but luckily, I've seen the film. That's the fourth <laughs> time I've seen it. So. Yeah, you, you've seen it quite a few times. You were like one of the first people to see it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Nonna, it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful film. Um, I don't know if we're opening it up for questions yet. Yeah, um, for myself or, or Titch, I know Titch, Titch's network is a little bit like wibbly wobbly, but um, sure. <laughs> but well, yeah, if, if it's all right to go first because I'm gonna have to let my mother in law in in a second. Um, yeah, so if I jump off the Zoom, that's why, but I'll come back. <laughs> but, um, yeah, fantastic film, two of you. It's it's really really inspiring. Um, I guess got two questions. One is a more general question for you, Alicia, which is, um, what are your hopes for the film? And then this is to both of you as well. How important do you think it is that we see more representation for black artists in our industry of wildlife art? Um, I mean, I can take the first bit first and then we can, then, I, then I'll hand over to Titch for, for the second bit. But um, I mean, I think my hope for the film was mostly I wanted to draw attention to Titch's work because I don't think that he gets as much recognition as he deserves. I mean, you've seen his art, it's phenomenal. Oh. Um, he does so much for conservation and for education in Victoria Falls. And I mean, I didn't know about Titch until um, Wildlife Arts of the Year last year, and he doesn't have nearly as much um, recognition as he should. And so that's why I wanted to make the film. And so I think I hope one of my biggest hopes is that he gets more recognition as a direct result of it. And I also hope that Wildlife Art is taken more seriously because it is a really effective conservation tool, as I'm sure you all agree. And, um, and I hope that that sort of comes through in the film. Um, I personally think it's very important to represent black artists and artists from underrepresented backgrounds, but I think, uh, Titch, if you want to sort of say something about that. If the network holds up. <laughs> I don't know if Titch is frozen. Frozen, maybe. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, if, <laughs> if I can always, if Titch doesn't come back, then I can always ask him and I, we can like post the the answers via video but um yeah Which you can also maybe leave a message in the chat then yeah. i can i can ping him a message and just see if his network is holding up yeah um i am i think his network might have gone but um wait hopefully he'll come back <laughs> Nice. Um, I had a I had a question, Alicia, because um, I saw that there was some animation of you in it, which is wonderful. Um, so I was wondering, in the, when you started this movie, in fact, is it something like how the movie is outlined and what will effectively be in the movie? Like, for example, the animation is that something that you know from the beginning that you implement, or is it? Or has like many things in the movie started to evolve as you were filming or afterwards? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I 
I knew I wanted to have my art in alongside Titch's, um, just because, I don't know, I think, I mean it was kind of, I, I, I knew I wanted to have my art in it and I was really interested in animation and I hadn't really done it much before, I'd done a little bit but not, not loads and um, so then when I kind of was looking at, I, I, I didn't really storyboard it out loads, I was thinking maybe having it as like chapter things, so kind of the way I did the chapters was sort of a little bit planned but definitely evolved a lot, it didn't look like that when I was thinking about it um, in January, February. <laughs> um, and then having massive, um, and, and yeah, Nish, just pop it in the chat if ben, Benji doesn't want to say it out loud, but um, <laughs> um, oh, Titch is back, everything is going on. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I think I I wasn't certain, and then when I kind of was editing and stuff, I I kind of realised I wanted to author the film and have it as the two of our voices kind of entwined together, and then because I decided to author it, it made it easier to kind of put my animations in it, and um, one of the big kind of animated stories is the one about Sylvester the Cheetah, and we didn't have any footage of Sylvester, and so that was kind of, that lent itself to animation really nicely, and um, yeah, I, I don't know. Did that answer your question? I feel like I went on a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's 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 super nice to see animation actually. It's yeah. not something that you see a lot in uh, in the arts. So I I do follow, for example, Aaron Blaze, who's like uh, an animator from former animator from Disney, who sometimes tries to raise awareness uh, with animation. But yeah, it's it's quite rare. So very interesting uh, perspective. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I think with the animation, like one of the big. I keep, I'm giving this girl so much rep, I don't think she knows. But there's an animator called um, Goes by Lemon Colley, and she's called Michelle, and she's really good. And I think she was a huge inspiration um, for me, and um, sort of working out kind of um, that sort of area. And I think I just love animated things. I like blending the two, and I think it is something you don't really see in natural history documentaries. So it's something mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to do as a bit, because I wanted to make something that was different, because I don't really, I don't know, I wanted to make something that was different and more engaging, because I think often, when things are just the same, people don't engage with them. Um, so, and, and Titch has dropped out again, so the network. <laughs> Lovely, okay. Hello, everyone. I have a question, if I, if I may. <laughs> yeah, 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 Nina, yes. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, half of bed. Um, so I, I missed the beginning. I'm very sorry. I was still get, taking my kids to bed. Um, I, um, one thing that really strikes me is these um, images in which he draws the splash mm -hmm. and where the animal appears. For me, it has something to do with extinction. I don't know if that's the right um, connection, but I feel like there's like mm -hmm. the last splash of animal left and the rest is already gone. And I, I just wanted to know if that was the thought behind it or um yeah what the connection was there and then also i wanted to see if you and titch um want to join an artivism right. set at some point <laughs> um, <laughs> together okay. i think i'd love to do an artivism chat but titch you definitely should chat about your piece <laughs> okay so this is where i come in yeah <laughs> okay okay my apologies, guys. I'm having a bit of a storm here, which is disturbing my connection. But um, I feel glad to be back. Well, to answer your question, yes, that, that is a story of survival and extinction as well. So I think you got it, although I will do one, two, two, eight, one more thing on that is um, the, the splash. Style or the splash technique or like I say, the story of survival. It's actually a depiction of threatening its life uh, like that. So yeah, it's the story of survival and the story of extinction as well. Yeah, I don't know that I try to answer it well. 
yeah I, I i well that's how i felt when i saw the pictures so totally um what i um it's it's a great message and um i think the idea behind your painting really really comes across so great piece of artivism and congratulations on a beautiful exhibition and a beautiful film alicia so well well done thank you yeah it was it was so much fun kind of putting it together with church and kind of filming out in Zimbabwe. I'm going to say this now, just in case we do get cut off. I'm um, just rejoin using the same link because I have a free Zoom <laughs> and it's going to expire in six minutes. Um, Titch, if you're still, if your connection is holding up, Benji um, has a question for you. He wants to know if um, you paint outside as well as in your studio. And I know the answer, but I think you should take it away. <laughs> Sure, I do paint outside the studio as well. Uh, you mean give me six. Uh, one is uh, at 11 a.m. Uh, at the Elephant uh, Sanctuary. The place which I like the most. And, and later, Oh, Titch, you're breaking up a little bit. And, hey, Titch, if you switch your video, uh, does that make your audio better? Uh, <laughs> at uh, 5 p.m. we had another uh, interview session with with the uh, colleagues uh, of Libya. I'm going to share the video. So yeah, I do have painting outside okay okay you, you can you hear me right now that's a bit better yeah hopefully <laughs> it's so All unfortunate right. that you put the storm uh, uh, Do you hear me louder? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, hear me. I was just trying. To, okay, oh, right. you are getting this message. I really do hate it very much. And today, I had two painting sessions. One was earlier today at the morning, during the morning time, and the one was later after. You are getting this message. Wait, well, Tishi, uh, <laughs> your network is increasing. I increased. do love painting outside this. You went on double speed, and that's okay, Maya. <laughs> Titch, your your network went a bit mad, and you went on to like triple speed. <laughs> and it was quite sort of. Um... <laughs> um, uh, yeah. But um, I know that Benji Titch does paint outside, so um, he paints at his at the elephant sanctuary, which I think is what Titch was trying to say before his network sort of garbled him a little bit. Um, he also paints in the bush sometimes, and. Um, and when he was younger, he used to go out a lot, and I think he's now disappeared. <laughs> but um, yeah, he does. He does. He does go outside and um, and sketch. And so that was a big thing when we were filming. We I wanted to get him out with the elephants, um, and because he often does them at the sanctuary where they're sort of orphaned and being rehabilitated, that was the kind of easiest way to do that. Um, I don't know where Titch has gone, Detlef, but when t when he comes back, <laughs> I'll ask him your question. Good, I thank you. I was maybe thinking maybe you knew, but... Uh... Well, I'll read it properly then. Um, I can have all your expressions for other countries. Um, he's had some in Harare, um, which is, um, so like not in Vic Falls, but still within um, yeah. Zimbabwe. Um, I don't know. I mean, he's done stuff with GSWF, and so that's kind of international, but virtual. Um, yeah. We were looking at doing, when we were first brainstorming for the film, we were thinking of trying to do one in the UK, but um, especially because it was all crowdfunded, it was going to be really expensive <laughs> and quite uh, logistically difficult for me to work out how to ship everything across and then organise an exhibition in the UK along with the film. Um, but it's definitely something that I think we'd both quite like to do. Mm. Um, like, I think it's hard because I think it's obviously quite expensive and quite difficult to sort of organise stuff kind of internationally. And I think, um, yeah, so that's kind of the answer is, is sort of yes. I think definitely it's something that he wants to do. But um, 
I think, and it's something that I think we wanted to kind of explore a little bit together, but I don't know. Yeah. Watch this space. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to, I'm kind of trying to scan the, the chat. I'm also aware that we have a minute and a half in this Zoom, so I don't know if people want to kind of, if I end this Zoom, should we just rejoin in the next, using the same link? Is that okay with everyone? Okay, I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, can anybody, who, who was asking the questions before, because I... I, I was briefly scanning them and then I got distracted by the fact that Zoom was going <laughs> to run out. So I don't know who put questions in the chat. I know Sarah, Sarah you did, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so for Titch, I was wondering just like, what are your biggest dreams for your art? Because it is amazing and astounding and I, I think it should be everywhere. But what do you want your art to be and become? Titch, can you hear us? Oh, he might be uh, asking, for, he's, he's answering Benji's question in the chat, so he might answer your question in the chat, Sarah. Um, did you have a question for me as well? I did, yeah. What are the next steps for the film? Which I um, think is rad, by the way, and I love the way you broke it up. It made it super interesting. Thank you so much. Um, well, as I kind of said, so it's basically, I'm not releasing it publicly until um, next year. Um, oh, Titch can't hear us. Um, so, Sarah, if you type your question into the chat, then um, then he'll type back for you. Um, I'll just tell him that you're going to do that. Um, so I'm going to release the film next year just because if I want to pop it in any film festivals um, then you kind of can't have films publicly available but um, I want to release it publicly next year because it's important to me that people actually see the film and see Titch's work um, and so that's kind of sort of plan. I have quite a lot of footage um, that we didn't go into the final film like there was quite a lot of stuff about kind of human wildlife conflict and kind of looking at that kind of side of the story and so I think I'd quite like to do kind of additional things to kind of add on to the film um, and, and just sort of shorter things for kind of social media and, and YouTube. And um, yeah, so they're kind of like, yeah, I, I want to kind of have it out there in the world and sort of have people seeing it and engaging with it. I think David Shepherd Wildlife Foundation are quite interested in potentially screening it in London in January. So if I come through, that'd be really exciting. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Jess has asked, um, how long did it take to plan the film and how long did it take to film? Um, so <laughs> I um, started planning it in January. So I came up, I was coming, trying to come up with a film idea and um, I chatted with Titch at this artist panel last year. And um, I was trying to think of a film and um, my supervisor asked if I knew any artists from underrepresented backgrounds and I knew Titch. And I showed him Titch's work and my supervisor loved it and was like, you should definitely like try and do this guy. And um, so I contacted Titch and I said, would you like to do a film together about you? And he said yes, <laughs> which I was very pleased about. Um, and. Uh, that was probably about January and I was never expecting to do an international film because they're much more expensive because you got to afford flights and stuff so then I sort of went into a bit of a, a two-month um, crowdfunding whirlwind um, <laughs> to, to actually produce the film so the film was fully funded by crowdfunding and then also um, some art commissions as well that I did during crowdfunding so it's quite an intense two months and alongside that I was kind of planning it a little bit so kind of doing risk assessments and um, budget and stuff and then I had a rough kind of idea so Titch and I had had a couple of zoom calls when his network was behaving a little bit more than it is tonight and um, we sort of chatted a little bit I kind of found out about the elephants and we kind of talked about sort of what we wanted to do and I found out that he hadn't had an exhibition a solo exhibition before and and I asked him if he wanted to do one and he said he did and so then we kind of decided that that was what we were going to kind of focus on a little bit um so the planning was kind of took from January to April and then May the 1st we flew out arrived May the 2nd we had a recce on May the 3rd where I actually met Titch for the first time 
and then filmed from the 4th to the 6th, had a break on the 7th and filmed 8th to the 10th and then flew back on the 11th and arrived home on the 12th. So it was quite an intense, short filming process and then actually editing it. I was on helping out on other people's films so I didn't start shot logging and then editing my film until June. Um, and then I was working on it, working on animations for mine and uh, for another film as well and editing my films. So that was June, July, August and then mid-September it was finished. <laughs> and the animations were just kind of August, it was an intense August um, uh, producing animations for two films. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, there are other questions I'm going to kind of, oops, um, I'm going to keep reading the questions in the chat. If people want to shout them out as well, then um, obviously you're more than welcome to. Um, uh, Titch says um, in the chat, I wish to explore all the possible avenues where my artwork can be exhibited and get my name out there and a living. I think that's in response to you, Sarah. Um, Vance suggests, uh, Deathliff said, Titch, how big are the challenges to get art supplies? Okay. Um, I assume he'll get to that. He's <laughs> he's still answering Sarah's, I think, at the moment. <laughs> Too many um, questions coming in. <laughs> um, and then, oh, thank you, Claire. That's really lovely. Uh, okay, cool. That's everything in the chat that I can answer. Does anyone want to leave him with any questions? Or you can type them. <laughs> I'll ask you a question this year while Titch is um, writing any comments. Uh, congratulations, it's amazing. Um, I was going to ask if you think working closely with Titch has influenced how you work in your style or, or how you approach it all. Um, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, I was thinking about this today, actually, because I knew this was coming up as a, as, a, as a screening and I was thinking it's crazy how much my work has changed in the last year and it is definitely due to Titch. And I don't know if you can hear me saying this, but I'll tell them afterwards if you can't. Um, it is due to Titch because he is um very colorful um in the work and like his use of color is is amazing um capturing animals really realistically but also just i don't know we chatted a lot about color it didn't go in the film in the end it was really interesting but uh, <laughs> i'm definitely gonna do something else with it because there was a lot of color chat um his use of color really inspired me because i used to do mostly black and white stuff and now i mean i'm looking at a piece that i was like on just for a camera zoom call and it's bright orange like i I use colour and I'm way more experimental with what I do. Like I, I kind of, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't sort of, I, I'll try everything like, and I think that's kind of come from Titch because the splash thing was just so different. I don't know anyone else that does that splash technique. Um, I've never come across it before. I think it's unique to Titch. And um, yeah, Claire's agreeing with me. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I think having that kind of unique style and just having the kind of like imagination and confidence to just do something different I think that's something I've taken from Titch like I increasingly I kind of use my nails my pipette and, and I draw with the pipettes and things like that and I think just yeah having the confidence to do different techniques and just use colours because I think Titch does it so brilliantly and it's something that yeah I've just kind of fallen into especially after coming back from Zimbabwe yeah <laughs> Um, ooh, Cole has said something, hang on, I keep losing the chat. Um, oh, I will, I, t I know he can't hear me, but I, I will send it to the recording so he can hear what we're actually saying. <laughs> um, Cole has said, um, how has this impacted your career so far? And how have you seen your wildlife artists making an impact in the community? Um, so, 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 so the second bit is definitely for Titch. In fact, it's kind of all for Titch. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I think, like, I don't know. It was, from my perspective, it was really heartwarming seeing Titch's first exhibition because he was really nervous and um, and it went so well and it was so wonderful to see how excited people were for him. And I think um, I was just an observer for that. We just kind of had the cameras rolling um, and just kind of sat back and I helped him set off a couple of things, but it was... It was very much passive on the exhibition day and it was really wonderful to see, I don't know, see people coming up and congratulating him and just sort of really loving seeing his artwork in person because they are stunning. I think um, 
having only seen his pictures online before and then actually seeing him in person that was a completely different experience because the canvases are huge <laughs> like they're literally as big as I am and I mean I'm not like massively tall but like they are huge canvases <laughs> um oh I, I have a question for you if um if I may um I, I was wondering if it has inspired you to kind of um, go out there in the world and find more undiscovered voices like in, in different countries and do something similar um, as a continuous project to um, maybe as well with, with women or with just minority groups that, that, that use art, you know, has this project been inspired to do, to do more, to make a series out of it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I would, I would absolutely love to be more of th more things like this like um i i adored um making this film there were definitely bits that were difficult but like yeah i i loved doing it and i loved working with titch on it i think that's the thing like it has been a very especially like the planning bit and, and shooting it was very collaborative and titch was an absolute dream to work with um such a you know he, as, as anyone who's actually spoken to him he, he's such a lovely guy um, and he's just, you know, amazing. So, so wonderful to work with. Um, and so, yeah, I, I loved kind of, I think I do love kind of telling stories that people haven't heard of before. And so I think I would definitely love to kind of work with more people from um, like minority backgrounds and, and, and female artists. It was quite nice actually doing the call out where I was asking for all of you guys for the ending sequence, which you've now seen. Um, it was nice because it was a lot of women that were getting back to me, especially to start with, to start with, I was thinking I was only going to have Mart and Titch as <laughs> the only guys to start with. Um, <laughs> but it was nice because it, it, it was nice seeing how many, how many women were engaging. Um, and I think it would be, I would love to do more films looking at, yeah, artists from different backgrounds and, and, and kind of conventional, unconventional styles and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. If you have anyone in mind, do suggest. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, drop me a message because I'm interested. <laughs> um, I'm trying to scan the chat because I don't want to miss anyone if someone puts it in the chat box. But I think people are just complimenting Titch, which I'm very pleased about because he is phenomenal. Um, yeah, Titch does do a lot of big pieces. Um, <laughs> he has smaller pieces as well. He had, we had lots of little like bird watercolours that we looked at. Um, Maria, I don't know when he would Titch will definitely get to your question, but he is self-taught. Um, he develops a splash style, um, and he kind of went through this with me. But like, he just found it by accident. He liked the way that water fell on a page. He thought it was a really beautiful pattern, and he just decided to add acrylic paint. And so he mixes acrylic paint with water, and literally gets a palette knife and kind of splats it onto the canvas. He has it on the ground and um it makes a big splash and then he pulls the palette knife through to give it the sort of sharp edges and he kind of drags it to make it so it can fit a face or fit an animal face so it's kind of a little bit it's very random then he kind of makes sure that it can fit what he wants it to um so that's that's kind of how, how that one works but i'm sure he'll actually explain it in his own words as well <laughs> which would be better than, than me kind of abbreviate giving an abbreviated version um yeah. Titch also used to, um, Deadlift Titch also used to have his studio in a little tent as opposed to what he has now, which is a little like tin um, thing which he shares with Sir So it used to be a literal little green tent in his garden. Um, so, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it's super challenging to, to sometimes work in that, but yeah, I loved uh, seeing the new uh, studio set up. Yeah, it's really nice. He's got it, it's such a colorful studio. Um, Mark, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah, not not a serious one, but I just want to know if Titch is still fighting over the radio as well. Uh, is he what still with the? Hang on. Still fighting over the radio. What music to have on in the studio? Oh my goodness! Who's, who's winning that? <laughs> battle? I'll ask him. Hang on. Um, I I it was I found that so funny when I found out. Um, <laughs> um. Also on that splash technique, if I could just comment on it, it's um. I'd never seen it before either. I remember when Titch, your lion popped up. Oh, you can't hear us. Titch's lion popped up in my social feed. Mm. And it was amazing. And the way 
one thing I really loved about it was that for me, it's like how, um, how you often see animals in the wild. You're not seeing the whole animal. You're often seeing them behind foliage. And it just, to me, that's, that's kind of what I took from it. It looks like it's peering at you through the, through the bushes, which just, I think, enhances that artivism angle, that kind of just hiding away, you know, how nature's being sort of pushed back and having to hide, um, hide from us. But um, I think it's, yeah, it's a real, it's a really powerful technique that I, I hope he does more of because it's, it's working. Yeah. Okay, I, I think yeah. I'm getting some audio. Oh, hey. you're back! Yay! Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Matt. I'm just looking at your question. Yeah. Alicia managed to get it through to me via <laughs> WhatsApp. I'm, okay. I'm actually using two screens right now, one on WhatsApp, <laughs> one on Zoom. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, we, we do have a little bit of a, a smart echo. We, <laughs> yeah, it, it turns out that the type of music that I would love to listen while doing some work is not quite, quite a style, but, you know, uh, sometimes she wins. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. Um, I'm really trying to keep up the pace. The network is just a big mess here. You're doing an amazing job. Oh, um, Titch, if, if you're, as your audio is working, um, Christina is asking, is oil paint your favorite medium? And what do you like about best about it? And when did you start using it? Okay, I began using oil paints back then, 2011, but that was once. I used to sketch a lot and I can say drawing mediums have become my friend, but I'm beginning to love oil painting because of the flexibility of, um, of blending and some other, um, you know, I can say color is more relieving. I don't know whether I say it correctly, but I feel more refreshed when I do more color. And I, these days, I will admit that I'm doing a little bit of sketching here and there. So I seem to love oil paints, watercolors as well. Yeah, a bit of acrylics. Mm -hmm. A bit of everything. Yeah, I know um, you wouldn't have been able to hear it, but we were talking a little bit. I, um, I can't remember who it was asking now, but um, someone Oh, it was, Kat, it was a cat that asked me about um, what I'd taken from, from you as, as inspiration. I was saying that it was your use of colour and because we had such a, quite a few conversations about kind of using colour and making okay. your own colours and, and, um, and yeah, it's hugely influenced um, your, my style uh, well, based on yours, yeah. Before I forget, before I forget, the guy who actually uh, mentored me through this thing is after high school, his name is Sunny Ledlum. He's now in France. He actually did art at um, Zeligazi Art School. It's an art center which is here, which is located in one of our local towns here in Zimbabwe, Bulawayo. So he used to love bright colors when he was working with watercolors. And I used to love that. Every time when I thought about painting, I would think of, I wish to do something like what Sanele does. So this bright color work, which appears here and there in my color work, in my paintings, is actually an inspiration from him. <laughs> yeah, actually, back then, 2002, 3, 4, like, I don't know, like 20 years ago, 20, 19 years ago, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I didn't, I didn't know about him. About that guy oh. who the color. I forgot to tell you about, but it is there on my bio. <laughs> it's okay, we can put it in the next yeah. one, Church. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, does anyone else, because Titch's connection is working, does anyone have any more questions for Titch or I before we kind of wrap this up for eight o'clock? Um so it's okay if no one does. <laughs> I think there's another one in the chat. Oh, is there? Where's it gone? Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, is the final piece you paint a collaboration, more sketches of the animals? Do you have photos to help with your pieces? Um, 
tips. So yeah, do you do are you using multiple sketches to compile just your final image or um and are you using photo references um with the big splash pieces? I think this is a reference to. I use lots of photo referencing uh, and sometimes I do picture mixing as well. First I work it out with my Photoshop, I gather a few different pictures. Like you have got three pictures, but they all don't look the same, but differently they've got some features which you like to capture in one painting. So I'll put, those, put up those pictures together to come up with uh, a picture of my liking, just edit it here and there. Then probably I'll print out that picture and sketch it and complete it, you know, pursue my painting project using an edited version of maybe two to three, sometimes four. I don't know whether you have tried that, but uh, I've tried it you now. Uh, for example, with this portrait of the splash tape, um, I'm currently working on a tiger which was edited from three different pictures. I'll post it later, maybe later December once I have a grip on it. Yeah. So I do use reference pictures. Yeah. I know that um, we, we we started working on a piece when um, we were together at the very beginning on the recce day and that was that was with a photo reference. So we started work on a hippo mm -hmm. um, together, which I don't know if you've done any work on it since. <laughs> you mean the hippo? Mm-hmm. Well, the hippo is still there, Yay. still waiting for the time when we can, you know, mm -hmm. just, I, I'm, I understand we've been working uh, really hard, me and you, mm -hmm. you've been working on editing the, the video, mm -hmm. making it final, smooth. I've also been working on getting my work back on the market since we've been closed down. You know, Zimbabwe mm -hmm. is a very difficult space to market uh, and sell artworks actually so the good news is recently i've just found a space which could be a permanent home for my artworks locally here at the local hotel victoria full safari lodge you can always check it out on my instagram so i've been really trying to push hard like the july exhibition mm -hmm. really worked me hard and i'm still trying to get a grip on on my brushes again but i'm sure maybe this week i can't, I can't be i'm sure you can see lots of unfinished works <laughs> just just behind me there yeah so something is really coming up and i'm really looking forward to it i'm so glad that the that the hotel are thinking of actually letting you kind of just be there on a permanent basis um yeah it'd be fantastic that's the one that you put on your tiktok the other day isn't it uh, sorry, I didn't get that again. Please. Did uh, you put that? Did you put that video on your TikTok the other day? Is that is that hotel? Yes, yes. Yeah. Just a little. Yeah, I did. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of like I'm new to. Uh, it's kind of like I'm new to TikTok as well. I've been using a lot of Instagram and Facebook, and I'm still trying to learn how. To I think we're all trying to learn TikTok. The the best TikToker <laughs> is Mart. <laughs> <laughs> it's, too much. it's too much to keep up with TikTok. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah <laughs> does anyone um, have any other questions um I no question but just to say that's fantastic news titch that um mm -hmm. they're going to be hanging your work at, at the lodge and it's only in their interest because it's going to enhance the experience of all the guests. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it's good that that collaboration's come about, and I hope it I hope it works out for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it too. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, I'm I'm so pleased with everything like everything you've achieved since since we last saw each other. It's yeah, it's really I don't know. It makes me so happy mm -hmm. whenever you whenever you share the news with me. So. <laughs> Yeah, both of you, by the way, like you, you've done amazing, really. The film is incredible. Um, and I think it should be toured around schools. I think school children would love to love to watch this film. So maybe that's another avenue. But, um, mm. And I can't wait to watch it for a fifth time. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I guess I will have um that my exhibition in Bristol will have a QR code for it, so you can watch it there. <laughs> um, Nina said, um, "I was wondering if you're going to work more with children. Is that is that to me or to Titch, <laughs> or both? I don't know if Titch is still here, actually." It was to, it, well, Martin said it. I just had typed it, and I <laughs> accidentally oh, sent it sent a direct message to Cole. I don't know why that happened. So. <laughs> right line, right line. Yes, same. So I had to retype it. Um, yeah, no. I mean, you can both answer. But I was um, when I came into the the chat, um, I just watched the scene with the children and how he inspired them. So that mm. that was um, a question. Uh, for Titch, but if you want to say something to that as well, Alicia, feel free <laughs> if you want to work more with children. But... I think, I don't know if he's still here. He's disappeared, so his nightmare might cut out again. Well, then then the question was to you. <laughs> okay, um, I'm sure he will answer it later. I mean, the kids in the film are his, um, so uh, yeah, they're, they're four and six years old. They're very sweet. Um, and uh, yeah, he works at a local primary school as well as an art teacher. Um, so he works with children already and I think it's something that he loves doing because obviously they're the future and I think he loves seeing how excited they get about the art and how much they learn. So I think that he will definitely continue to work with children um, in a sort of teaching capacity. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd like, I, I mean, I think it'd be really cool if, if kids saw the film because it is quite inspirational. So. Um, I'm working with children, it's fun. <laughs> like they're, they're so enthusiastic, like kids, children's kids are so cute to work with. They, they just, they, they had so much fun, I think. They just liked, they were so curious about the cameras and the microphones especially. Um, Caesar, who was, who was four at the time, kept um, screaming into the microphone because she, she thought it was funny. She liked my reactions. So uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, yeah, I, I liked working with the kids in the film. It was, it was really fun. Um, Ah, so Marie has asked a question, but I don't know where Titch has gone. But um, it's what do you want or hope for your children in connection to your artivism? Um, I really can't answer that at all. So um, I hope he comes back because I can't, I can't offer an answer to that one, I'm afraid. Um, I don't know where his network's gone. I'm also aware that it is eight o'clock, so if people need to go, or we can keep going until this scene runs out. Um, like either is good. I don't know if people have more questions, so I like want to give the option for that. Um, but if not, we can round off. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump off, but um, I will see you. Is this week? Yeah, or... I'll see you on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, if anyone else is in Bristol should come as well. <laughs> yeah. 4.30 okay. start, is it? Uh, 6.30, but you can turn up at 4.30. I'll be there. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not, yeah, okay, we've got a bit of a scheduling thing. I'll have to speak to Amy okay. because it, it clashes okay. with the work too. But we'll work sure. it out. I'll definitely be there for some of it. Amazing. Okay, cool. Well, I'll see you on Thursday, Mark. It's so nice to see everyone's faces on this. Such a good idea, Alicia. <laughs> oh. See you soon. Bye, Mark. Bye, everyone. I don't know if anyone else has any questions. Feel free. I, I don't know if Titch is coming back because I'm not entirely sure what's happened. I think his network's gone again. I just wanted to quickly ask a question to Titch, or maybe you know this, uh, Alicia, um, is, and maybe it was mentioned in the movie, but I didn't get it. Um, who was actually attending most of the time the, the workshops that Titch was organizing? Is it people, local people, or is it people visiting Victoria Falls? Um, um, so the workshops, it's mostly visitors. So the ones at the sanctuary, like the one that we filmed. So we were actually filming a live session that he was teaching. So yeah. I have, um, so it's mostly um, tourists, but sometimes it's local. So um, for the film, we actually had mostly, and that's okay, cool, Cole, see you soon. <laughs> um, so for the actual film, we were filming a session with, I think it was like people who own like the tourist um, companies. Um, so it was mostly local people, but normally it is like um, tourists and international people and visitors and they're people who haven't seen elephants before or that people just want to have a, an experience in Zimbabwe that is quite memorable. Um, yeah, so it's normally tourists, but then I think he has a mixture of local people and tourists coming to his gallery. Awesome. <laughs> I do not know. Ooh, I can't read that message. That is actually fun. I'm getting the impression that everybody is kind of ready to go. So um, unless anybody shouts now with another question, um, I will wrap this up.
it's just really yeah. amazing. It's really good art. It makes you inspired to get the paintbrushes out, I think. We just don't do enough nowadays, really. But yeah, hopefully it becomes a bit more known and widespread because it's amazing art. And I don't normally like splashy things because I'm quite an in-detail art person, like mm -hmm. realistic, but it somehow makes you love it because it's chaos, a bit chaotic, but also really realistic, which is, yeah, really cool. It's different. I like it. It's different. Yeah, I'm glad you like really it. Really good video. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, he's he's some phenomenal. It's this nice blend of something very stylized and something very very realistic, um, which I think he's he's nailed. It works really well. It's very different. Um, and he has quite a few different. I'm just trying to actually have one of his pieces on my wall. Um, ah, that elephant there is one of his pieces, and that is more stylized um, than any of the others that he's done. So he has a few different kind of hidden tricks up his sleeve. Um, <laughs> But um, that is the one that he used when he was teaching his kids in the film. So, um, yeah, so he does do sort of more, more stylized things as well. And he does the kind of photorealistic stuff and it's, it's a nice blend. Um, yeah, I'm glad you should you should make time for your art because I remember your pieces and they were gorgeous. They were the nice kind of borrow, really detailed. Um, It'd be amazing really seeing where he was like 10 years ago in a piece compared to now, because I always find that really interesting, like how far you've changed. Anyway. So, yeah, so that was quite, that's a good point actually. So basically, that was something that we were thinking of putting in. So I was when I was out there, I was kind of like, "Have you got any, you know, of your old pieces?" And also, Mary, I'm really glad that you were painting <laughs> that you were painting that has inspired you. That that makes me very happy. Um, yeah. So when we were out there, um, I yeah, I wanted to film some of his older pieces as a kind of form of archive. And um, he doesn't have many because he gives everything away. And um, so when he was in school, he'd do everything and just give it to friends. And so he doesn't have many of his drawings from when he was younger. Um, he has some pieces that are from kind of um, a little while ago. And um, I think I think I filmed them. A lot of his early pieces also got water damage, which was annoying because when he was in the original tent, they had a big flood and it leaked down one side. And um, so a lot of his pieces got quite seriously damaged. Um, but yeah, I think what the Sylvester sketches so the animation of Sylvester where it goes for a walk, the original frame where it's sitting is his sketch that I just digitised. Um, and that sketch is probably maybe five years old. Um, and that's what the original sketch looks like. So things like that are a little bit older. Um, all his splashes are within the last three years. So he started doing the splashes in COVID and some of the pieces before that are a little bit older. But um, yeah, I yeah. mean... I a lot yeah. of people probably changed over COVID because they had a bit more time to do stuff and experiment, really. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, bless. Titch is really, I think Titch is really gutted that his network's been so bad. Um, yeah, so I, I, I will, um, he, he did, I, I think when it was behaving in the sort of earlier, we, I hope that everyone got a little bit more of a, a feel for how lovely he is and he answered people's questions. Um, oh, he's trying to come back in. But, um, but yeah, so has anyone got anything else or shall I more or less round off? Just wanted to say this is super important work that you're doing, Alicia, and and thank you so much for doing this. I know it's a, a work of love and you've worked so hard on it. So I'm very happy for you thank and you. the community. And <laughs> yeah. yeah, I hope to. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah. Finally. <laughs> Oh, I thank you, Deathless. Yeah, that's yeah. I'm I'm really glad that the community. I mean, it has it has been a very community thing, kind of pulling, especially the ending for the film together. That was very much like thanks to all of you guys. So, um, yeah. So that was and, and like the response from the art community when I put the call out on Instagram was phenomenal. Like, um, I think excluding me and Titch and Titch's kids, there were seventy nine um, responses, um, wow. and. To be fair, there were 80, but um, Matthew Pollock uh, forgot to send me his video. So, <laughs> so I he, met Matthew. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. He apparently did about 20 takes and um, forgot to send me every single one of them. Bless him. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, yeah, it was very much like thanks to you guys because I wasn't expecting the response I got. I was expecting to maybe hit like 40 videos and then I hit 40 within the first day and I was like, Oh, cool! I can try and like <laughs> hit a lot more than this and make it much more impressive. Then that's that's what I did. So yeah, thank you everyone for sending them, uh, sending the videos. Because yeah, it really made a huge difference. 
and I'm trying to add the yeah yeah Titch is thanking everybody and on that and, and yeah I would second that thanks it's yeah it's, it's been really lovely like chatting to you all this evening and um I'll pop the recording I'll pop the recordings together and um send them out afterwards for everybody and um I'll also send out the YouTube link so you can watch the film again in your own time <laughs> and potentially with them I don't know how good it streams across so um yeah but cool I hope you all have really lovely evenings and it's been so lovely chatting to you and um and I hope that you've enjoyed chatting to Titch and if you have any more questions feel free to drop me a message on Instagram or email me um yeah or, or indeed to get in touch with Titch so yeah um bye all <laughs> bye Lucia bye everyone bye